Hey, so let's take up our next question for discussion, which is question number 11. This question also holds two marks. This says obtain the expression for the ratio of the de Broglie wavelengths associated with the electron orbiting in the second and third excited state of hydrogen atom. Let's have a look onto the solution for this question. We know that the de Broglie wavelength associated with the momentum p is given by this expression that is lambda is equal to h by p. Now, the momentum associated with the electron which is orbiting in nth orbit is given by this expression that is p naught by n. Now, here in this question we need to talk about the second and third excited states. For second excited state n will be 3, for third excited state n will be 4. So, when you will put the values here for the second excited state, we are going to put n as 3. So, when you will put n as 3, the momentum will come out to be p naught by 3. And when you will put that value in this equation 1, the lambda that is the wavelength or the de Broglie wavelength for the electron in the second excited state will come out to be 3 h by p naught. And when you will calculate this for the third excited state you need to put n as 4 and the momentum for this excited state comes out to be p naught by 4 and when you will calculate the de Broglie wavelength that comes out to be 4 h by p naught. Now, in the question you have been asked to find out the ratio of the de Broglie wavelength of the electron for the second and the third excited state. So, you need to take the ratio of these two. So, when you will divide these two, you are going to get the final result as 3 by 4. So, this is going to be your final result. Okay. Now, let us see how many marks you are going to get for each step. So, for writing this expression that how the de Broglie wavelength is associated with the linear momentum, you are going to score half mark. And when you will write that how this p is related to the orbit, you will get more half mark. Further, for the calculation of the wavelength for the second as well as for the third excited state that is for these two steps combinedly you are going to score half mark and then finally calculating the ratio of these two you will get half mark for this step that is when you will successfully calculate the ratio of the de Broglie wavelength for the second and the third excited state. So, this is how you will be scoring 2 out of 2 for this particular question. I hope this question is clear to you. Now, let us move on to the discussion for the next question. Hey, so now let us take up the next question that is question number 12 which is again of 2 marks. This question says a charged particle Q is moving in the presence of a magnetic field B which is inclined to an angle 30 degree with the direction of motion of the particle. So, as per this question, the particle is moving at some angle to the magnetic field. Further, this question wants you to draw the trajectory followed by the particle in the presence of the field and also wants you to explain how the particle describes this path. Now, here you first need to draw the trajectory of the particle. For that purpose, you can see that if I just take the magnetic field to be in the x direction. So, this is my x direction x axis. So, I am taking the magnetic field in the x direction. Now, the charged particle as per the question enters in the magnetic field at an angle 30 degree. So, there is going to be two components of the velocity. The component of velocity in the y direction that is the perpendicular to the magnetic field is V sin 30 and the component of velocity which is in the direction of the magnetic field is V cos 30 that is along the x direction. Now, as this component V sin 30 is perpendicular to the magnetic field. 
सो चार्ज पार्टिकल क्यू इज गोन फील दोर्स बिकॉज ऑफ दिस कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ विलोसिटी एंड एज दिस कॉम्पोनेंट इज पेंडिकुलर टू द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इट्स गोन अ मेक द पार्टिकल टू मूव इन द सर्कल बट एज द पार्टिकल इज मूविंग इन द सर्कुलर पाथ at the same time it is also having a component of velocity in the x direction because of which it is traveling some distance in the x direction which we called as pitch so here you can see that the particle is moving in the helical path now you can give the explanation for this helical path of this charge particle in two ways you can actually write it theoretically that these are the two components one component that is v sin 30 is perpendicular to the magnetic field so because of that it's going to move in the circular path and in that particular time when it is moving in the circular path it is also covering some horizontal distance because of the parallel component of velocity which is in parallel to the magnetic field and the other way of doing that is you can actually calculate the radius of the helical path and also the pitch so to calculate the radius of the helical path you can see from the equation of force if i just compare the force this is going to be mv square by r that is the centripetal force which is provided by the magnetic force that is acting on the charged particles so this will be mv now in this case v is v sin 30 square divided by r r is the radius of the helical path and magnetic force that is experienced by the charged particle is because of this perpendicular component so this will become q b v sin 30 okay now from this you can clearly see that this r will come out to be m v sin 30 divided by q b this r is the radius of the circle made by the charged particle is called the radius of helix okay so the radius of helical path we have calculated now you can also calculate the pitch that is the distance covered by the charged particle to do that you need to calculate the time taken by the charged particle to complete one cycle and that time you can calculate as 2 pi r by v r is going to be the radius that we just have calculated and v in this case is again going to be the perpendicular component of velocity which is v sin 30 so when you will just substitute the values time period come out to be 2 pi m by q b now the distance that this particle is traveling along the x direction which is called as pitch is given by v cos 30 that is the parallel component of velocity or the component of velocity which is in the direction of magnetic field multiplied by this time okay so when you will do that you can see that this pitch come out to be 2 pi m v cos 30 divided by q b now you have calculated the radius of the helical path and you have also calculated the pitch so it means the particle is not just moving in the circular path it is traveling some horizontal distance also and this makes the path of the particle to be helical so you will write that the path traced by the particle will be helical now let's have a look on to the marking scheme for this question so in this question you were asked to draw the trajectory followed by the particle so when you will draw this complete diagram you are going to score one mark for it okay so you will score one mark for this diagram further this question wants you to explain this trajectory i have told you that you can also explain this theoretically and if you have followed this method of calculating the radius of helix and also for calculating the pitch for this all calculation that is for this explanation you are going to score half mark and final half mark you will get when you will write that this path that is followed by the charged particle is helical path okay so after this all explanation you need to write down there that the path is helical okay so this is how you are going to score 2 out of 
2 for this particular question let's move on to our discussion for the next question 